I kind of came to it in the really l- the late eighties when a, a kind of a liberal arts stream of, of thinking was a little more prevalent. So I, I had a very strong interest in performance and technology. And uh, so uh, at the time, I really focused on sound and music. So I, I originally had my training at the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, where um, we were trained in all facets of production. But I, I really focused on sound with, with the ultimate aim of wanting to uh, produce classical music uh, recordings. So following that through, I then moved to Salzburg in Austria and started a, a little production company um, just as the wall came down uh, in Berlin. And w- what that meant was that there was actually an influx of a, a lot of performers and musicians from um, East Germany. We, uh, so we, we did a lot of recordings where I, I handled the technology and my business partner uh, produced uh, the, the performance. And then uh, along the way, I, I kind of maintained my interest in the visual media and, and just kind of naturally gravitated over to visual effects because I, I found that the technology was actually very similar or, or the, the approach, which is like capturing a performance and then trying to reproduce that. In that process, there was there was a very interesting kind of revelation for me and that that is with with classical music and classical music recordings the, the aim is is to try to reproduce uh the performance and, and the acoustics of, uh, of the hall that, that you were um recording whereas with a visual media you, you can do that, but that, that was very much sort of the, the documentary approach to, to give a, a true representation of what happened in front of the camera. In that process, it, it became apparent that you could actually manipulate the, the imagery and in doing so create moods or help uh, tell a story or, or narrative. And th- that became increasingly um, of more interest to me. Um, so in, in that process, I then started to focus on color grading and, and visual effects. So, and at that time, Kodak had just started a process called the Cineon Digital Intermediate, which allowed you to scan and record film. So that, that made it viable to actually uh, change and manipulate the indus- the imagery. So it, it was that that kind of revelation of being able to take a performance and enhance it or contribute to it uh, that that became increasingly more of interest for me. In terms of the film industry, the digitization of film has um, made the moment of creation to the moment of uh, a, a performance um, shorter, and to an extent, it, it's actually brought a sense of theatre to cinema because uh, now it, it's a lot easier and quicker to, to grab a performance. You can just film it with a camera and, and you have it. Uh, in the old days, you would have to process it, so even at the best of times, there would be at least a 24-hour turnaround from the moment of performance to the moment of being able to see it. Likewise, in terms of um, the delivery or the creation of the, 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 the very thing that you are trying to create, it's a subtle but it's an extraordinary change. And that's with the, with the digital technology, you are working with the very medium that you are presenting. Historically, you were always working with a proxy because it was a very physical process. You would, ha- you would have to create the film. So, you know, there's many theories and white papers about the the removal of the physicality of of cinema. It's sort of perhaps ironic, uh, if that's the word, that we, with color grading, we actually spend a lot of time trying to give a sense of physicality to our digital imagery uh, in terms of giving it a retro look and by adding film grain and just doing anything we can to give it a sense of an actual physical thing, 
And I, and I think that's a somewhat psychological need. The, the digital technology has enabled, uh, it really has freed the creative process because you're not really limited by the physical media. You, you don't have to move uh, film prints. You can just send it digitally. Um, and, and likewise, you, you can cut, you can grade, you, you can make something, and then you can just present it. But uh, along the way, that, that's, that's kind of shifted the value of the story slightly away from the, this idea uh, of performance, uh, you know, a projection, a, a screening. So uh, I think digital has had an enormous change. In, in terms of process, it, it has speeded it up, and it's also given access. It's now quite easy for uh, to make a very presentable uh, piece to show in the cinema using quite humble technology, whereas historically that used to be quite difficult. It was interesting in that when Andrew won his Oscar for uh, uh, the fellowship, so uh, Rings won, um, th there, there was some feelings in, in some areas that um, it wasn't real lighting because we were using Windows and we, we were doing things digitally. Um, but th that really came back to uh, Andrew's response and, and many DPs who felt that this was the future and that this was the way to go was that th their title is a director of photography. So therefore, they are in fact responsible for these different areas. Some uh, conflict is perhaps too strong a word, but some reticence to acknowledge that this is perhaps the future came from... Um, on set in terms of one should light on set and then that's that's the image and that's the signature of DP and that shouldn't really be manipulated later. Um, and the, the, the second, uh, which is uh, uh, from a kind of purist's viewpoint, is that it's not film anymore. Um, which, uh, you know, w w th there's not really much of a response to that is, well, yes, that's true. But the third, which is perhaps a little more subtle, is for a few years before, it was possible to do this kind of grading and, and effects style grading, but at a much lower resolution. Um, so it, it, it tended to be used for commercials and for, t for TV commercials. So th there was um, a, a kind of combining of aesthetics where it was felt wh why, you know, you shouldn't use techniques that you, you're using for what are typically TV commercials, but then use them for a feature film. So th there was a, a, a bit of that discussion. Um, but ultimately, this was all driven by the, the original brief which was there were two reasons why we needed to do this. One was that they wanted to shoot in New Zealand for the locations, but they somehow wanted to, to make it feel like this mythical idea of what Hobbiton would be like, which, you know, English countryside light is normally referred to. And then the, the second was a second consideration or brief was to treat the footage and enhance the look that Andrew was giving with his lighting so that it, it looked like the conceptual drawings of Alan Lee. So uh, Alan did a lot of the illustrations in, in the original Tolkien books and, and was quite revered for his illustrations. So we would have Alan sitting in the room illustrating um, as he normally would um, and then we would try to emulate that look by manipulating the imagery and before that it, it, it wasn't normally a consideration to do that to an image. I think there's a very interesting convergence or like a second convergence, if you will. If you say that the early 2000s was really the convergence of, of digital technology 
and the combining of visual effects with grading so that the, the grading was like visual effects. So it all becomes one, one world. Um, I, I think what's fascinating now, and I, I don't really have a manifesto. I, I'm just really looking forward to kind of jumping in and just seeing what comes out of it. And that's, um, I, I, I think the impact of AI will not be what we think it is at the moment. It, it is just so open end. And I, I think the impact of, of what that will be is, is hard to predict, but I can already see there are questions being asked that we didn't think of asking, say, even like a month ago. So I, I think ultimately trying to find projects that are um, truthful, that, that have a respect for the audience, that it's not a cynical attempt at just reproducing some um, fashion. Uh, you know, to quote Wallace Stevens, it, it's easier to copy than to think, hence fashion. Uh, I, I think for me to, to just keep pursuing filmmakers and, and projects where there is a, a, an honest, truthful attempt at an act of creativity is uh, kind of my driving force. JC and I met a long time ago on when I was down in New Zealand and, and JC came down to have a look at what we're up to and showed a, a lot of interest and uh, became very enthused with what we were doing in terms of the process. And then we stayed in touch and then uh, over the years we, we, we spoke about, um, you know, what, what we could possibly do together, uh, you know, as, as a DP what he would really need and as, as a greater kind of what, what we felt. And then um, slowly we came up with this idea. As it developed, uh, the, the brief, you know, changed slightly in, into the, the product that we know now, which is the, this kind of dailies package. So it, it really came about uh, through a lot of discussions and just, just what would be possible. The original idea w was, uh, you know, grading and, and just what, what could be done because also the process was changing so quickly and, and uh, different people uh, were wanting different things. Um, so it, it, it was felt that it, it might actually be... Um, it, it, that it would have more of a future if it became, or if they really focused more on on dailies and you know the the, the world of that rather than to rebuild yet another grading package. I, I was always I, I was curious uh, how much success there would be, given that there are a couple of other alternates that are kind of studio driven. So it's quite a uh, I think the achievement of Dry Lab is extremely impressive, given um, that, that they're almost like the underdog. You know, they've really taken on a couple of other quite big and very established um, alternates. But because it, it, it's more suited to the market, uh, it, its adoption, as we've seen in Scandinavia, is has been very impressive. So. Uh, I, I think it's great myself. It's unique, so uh, I, I think it has a great place. Uh, it's a very good alternate, a uh, very solid choice. Um, um, I'm sure it will have great success in, in the market, uh, particularly as um, the, the whole world of, of what's an indie and what's a mainstream picture and what's a studio picture, and as, as all the, you know, the hierarchy is just changing so quickly. Um, I, I think the future looks good for Dry Lab.